Before we get to today's hand, I gotta tell you about the money that's just falling from the sky, people. What? What it's are you talking about? It's raining cash up here, up in Nitrogen Sports Poker Room. Why is that happening? What is the storm front from? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming, of course, because of all the Poker Guys free rolls and non-Poker Guys free rolls that you get to participate in on Nitrogen if you use the link in the description to play some poker. It's only two sign-up details, username and password. It's super easy. The withdrawals are super fast. Get you some free money on Nitrogen. We'll be there. We will. We'll see you there. You guys out there who play a lot of live poker know ego gets involved sometimes. And usually it ends up hurting somebody when their ego gets way too involved. Here in the LAPT, we have a clash of two clearly big egos just trying to outplay each other. Ends up getting really weird. It definitely gets weird. The effective stack is, it's a little hard to tell because no one gave a stack size. This is a little bit of an older hand. We did our best to count the chips. It's a little bit challenging. We think the effective stack is around 30 blinds though. Right, maybe 20 even. I maybe mean, 20, but probably closer to 30, but it's um, Somay's stack and he's gonna open with uh, a bad hand. A bad hand. We'll just say that, it's just a bad hand. You'll see, and this was suggested by Mateus Oliveira. Thank you, because this hand is crazy. It's yeah. pretty interesting. If you have a suggestion, use Twitter, include a YouTube link, and yeah. a timestamp. Do all those things. We're gonna break down this hand as we go, so get ready for some analysis. Mano 66 de esta mesa final. Peluca Somme, 8 y 3 de Trebol. ¿Qué va a hacer, Peluca? Sube, como tiene que ser. Tiene una buena posición y muchas fichas. No creo que yo vaya a ningún lado. Son muy lindas cartas para defender. Paga Neto. Con esa dama de nueve de corazón. Par de reyes y un seis en el flop. I don't know about you. I have a couple questions. I just have a couple questions about should, what's happened so far, and I think should, we should maybe address them. You should ask your questions. All right. Sure. I want to ask first, why is Neto leading the flop? What's going on here? Okay. It's a really good question. It's not standard in any way. Let's think about the hands Neto might normally be leading with. Queen, nine of hearts wouldn't be in this group. Two to back doors. Clear. Two back doors. Yep. That is nice. And unders to the kings. That's sweet. Oh, yeah. to the six. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, so hands in theory that Neto might be leading would be, if we were trying to range him normally, trip kings, mm -hmm. but would he really do that? A flush draw. Makes a lot of sense. I don't know I can buy. A six. Bad players would lead a six. Okay, bad players would lead a six. Yeah. Maybe a pocket pair slightly better than a six, like two sevens. Bad players would also do that. Right, so yeah. those are the things we might, we might see led here. At the same point, if we had trip kings, would we really lead here? I don't feel like we would. Usually not. Because I think we've been playing with Somme for a while now, Fernando, right? So we know he's the type of guy who does this. I mean, come on. He opens 8-3 suited in early position at the final table. Clearly this guy is aggressive and he's going to put chips in. If we had a big hand, I think we'd probably let him blast off, right? I mean, most of the time it's possible we might decide to do what it looks like Neto maybe was doing, which is we're betting to induce a raise with queen high. It seems a little nuts, so. I don't think really that's what he's doing. I think he's saying, I want to win this pot. This guy's super wide. I just want it to end. Then he gets raised and he starts thinking, what's going on here? Does this raise make sense? Right. Does Somme actually have it when he raises me here? Not very often, because let's look at Somme's decision here yeah. for a second. If you had trip kings, 
would you raise? Maybe sometimes. Maybe. But a lot of times you wouldn't, right? A lot of times you would just call because you'd only really want to raise with your best trip kings anyway. Wouldn't we just wait to spring the trap later, let the guy put in more chips? At least some of the time we would choose to do that for sure. Or if we're going to raise, why are we choosing this size? I right. mean, when we were talking about Neto's potential range in the world of things that make sense, which is not the world we're in clearly in this hand, but no. let's pretend we're in that world for a second. I feel like Neto has flush draws a lot of the time. So if we're gonna raise with Trip Kings here, we wanna charge him a good amount where he should be somewhat indifferent to calling, where he's like, ah, it kinda sucks, it's right about the right price, or we could overcharge him if we want to, let him make a mistake, but we shouldn't undercharge him for his flush draw because this is a tiny raise. Look at the size of the pot before a bet goes in, 430. Mm -hmm. Neto bet's tiny, the raise is to 285. It's a meaningless raise almost. It is super, super small. It should work against Queen Nine of Hearts. Yeah, it should, but guess what? It doesn't. It's also strange because if you had a full house, let's say you actually had pocket sixes of Somate just for a second, you're not likely to raise on this board at this time. You'd actually want to give your opponent a chance to make the flush. Although you might raise because you don't block kings. At least you don't block yeah. trip kings, but you might think, eh, how likely is he really have trip kings? You might take a shot and then the min raise actually could make sense. Yeah. But that's about that's it. That's three combos, so let's not worry too much about that that's as not. Neto. So we gotta get into Neto's head here and decide how does he call here? Um, okay, the only thing I can say is this story doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah. None of these stories are making sense. The raise doesn't make much sense. Let's ask this question. Would Somay raise with ace high? I doubt it highly. Yeah, it doesn't seem like a thing that most people would do because you have showdown value. Maybe they're not flush. Maybe once in a while they're not yeah, flush. Yeah, maybe, but flush draws are kind of a different category. Okay. Yeah. I mean, but he could have ace high and then not flush, well, which is beating us. That's what I'm all. saying is Somay opened in early position, so he has a lot of ace highs in his range theoretically. Yes. Those are either calls or folds usually, not a raise. So right. we're not worried that we're getting bluffed by a better hand most of the time unless somehow Somay decided to raise queen jack or queen 10, which he might not. He might not, right? right? Because it's still actually a pretty good hand that's got a lot of good cards that can come on the turn. Right, so if Somay's range doesn't include those hands, then he's saying he has trip kings, which is unlikely, it's rare that he would have that, or a flush draw, most of which queen high is beating. And yeah. we can call and shut down on spades if we want. I'm not saying that's what I would do, but I kind of understand the logic behind the call by Neto. I mean, we also have to hope though that a lot of the time we pick up some help on the turn or so many shuts down. Right. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard to call on the turn, I think. I mean, these guys are just crazy, right? Seems like it. Otro rey. Feluca medio que se rindió. Y el plan de yo, yo creo que era um, apostar más adelante para tratar de robárselo. No tiene ni idea qué puede tener el otro, ¿no? Peluca piensa que... Y la única forma que tiene de ganar es apostar. Esto puede ser el call de los de Latin American Poker 2 si paga con Dama High. Sabe que no tiene el as, porque con el as peluco hubiese pasado atrás. Wow. Wow. Este fue... Wow. Okay. That happened. Let's get, let's get into this, all right? So it feels kind of like Somay decided to shut down because his turn card was terrible. And then yeah. the river came and he's like, oh, I'm a crazy guy. I can't shut down. I forgot about that. And that's how it happened. But let's talk about the turn checks. Um, Neto's turn check is in flow. It makes sense. Of course. Somay's turn check is interesting. And there's kind of two sides to it. We like it a little bit. We don't like it a little bit. I mean, I like it because what are we repping now? Yeah. Right? The only thing if we bet the turn that we can really have for value is quad kings. It's questionable if we'd even bet with quad kings. We might often check that back anyway. I, I mean, did we really play trip kings like this on the flop? It's really hard for us to have quads and everything else that bets kind of never is very strong, right? Because you're going right. to check back a six. You're going to check back. If somehow you have two tens, you're going to check that back. You would think. 
I would think. Yeah. So yeah, you can't rep much, so you might as well check back. So we think we like this check back from Somme. However. However, there is a problem. Yeah. The problem is, if Neto had a flush draw, this is a terrible card for Neto, and it doesn't really matter what we're repping, we can usually get him to fold his flush draws. Usually, although maybe we know Neto well enough to know that it does matter what we're repping. Look, the guy called our raise with queen high. Right, but he doesn't maybe. have to have a queen high flush draw. Of course Right, of course like not. Neto's flush draws go way down. They go all the way down. Yeah. So all of his bad flush draws, we can get him to fold, just end the hand. Yeah. So that's that's the value of betting, even though we're not telling a good story. The other side of it, though, is, of course, any value that Neto could ever have. Like, if he did have a six, which maybe he would play this way. He's which would be horrible. But, but he's but... certainly never folding on this turn. No, you wouldn't think so. Right. No. Okay, so we get to the river. Neto checks. Right, Okay. As he should. I mean, I don't know if he should. He could bluff. He, he could, could bluff, bluff. he has queen high, but then he would yeah. be putting... Uh, I don't know if he should bluff, he because bluff. then he's putting Somi on ace high, which doesn't really make any sense. Nope. So, because Somi's going to call with his full houses, pretty much for sure. 100%. Yeah, so I don't think bluffing is a good idea for Neto. But Somi decides he has to bluff, which is reasonable. He has eight high. Yeah. He's not going to win at showdown. <laughs> so, bluffing is a, probably a good idea. I mean, giving up is something I do advocate, but... Bluffing's a good idea. This is okay at this point. As played, yeah. we get to this point, deciding to take a shot in the river. I mean, we have 8-3. We decided to raise the flop. We should probably take a shot here. Right. So Somme's sizing is interesting, and it's kind of a double-sided coin. Um, I kind of like it because he can rep doing a weird thing where he's raising... Say, let's for a second, just take a second, go to theory land. Okay. And say Somi had pocket eights, right? Yeah. He started the hand with something like 20 to 25 big blinds, we're not entirely sure. But if Neto himself had nines or better, he would probably have just gotten it in with Somi preflop, right? So Somi thinks, okay, I'm ahead of everything but trip kings that Neto is leading, so I can raise for value. It's an above the rim raise with, with pocket eights on the flop. I mean, that is possible. Of course, there is a problem with that story too, which is if Neto had a big flush draw, he might decide to three bet. Of course. And then that three bet no, shove on is, us, and pocket eight's probably gonna have to find This is a all a huge stretch to Good. try to give Somme credit, all right? Great. This is a huge stretch, but let's for a it. second, let's go back to pocket eights for Somme, all right? Yeah. He checks back the turn because he doesn't think that Neto is gonna continue with his flush draws now, and he wants to get another bet in or have Neto bluff, something yeah. like that. So we get to the river, and the sizing is kind of cool. He's saying, I hope you have a six, because mm -hmm. I have two eights. I hope you have a six. You can't fold for this size. Right. right, absolutely. So that's the benefit side of this bluff. But of course, somebody that has to play a hand like pocket eights like that, which would be horrible and absurd. So it's not that great, but that's, that's the best I got. I mean, one thing that we talked about in our podcast is that Phil Helmuth might actually play pocket eights or pocket tens exactly like this. We've yeah. seen him do it. Min raise the flop, check back that turn. Yeah bet the river for value and really be betting for value there and yep. raising the flop for value as well, but sort of also for information. Right. Um, so players do this. Successful players can take this line, but you're not going to see it very often and it mostly doesn't make sense. Right. So let's discount that because come on, that's crazy. Especially if we're Neto, we can discount that because it's crazy. And also if we know at all that Somi's the kind of guy who might just raise eight, three suited. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, can we ever fold? I mean, it's queen high. It's terrible. I mean, that's a crazy question. Can we ever fold? Of course we can fold. It's <laughs> queen high. But let's talk about why we can call, okay? Yeah. Because we discounted ace high, right? We don't yeah. think Somi has ace high. No. And if he did have the ace high flush draw, he's probably checking the river and hoping he wins, mm -hmm. right? So we're not worried about that. We're not worried about a better bluff than our hand. Uh, no, and in fact, if somehow, some way, Soma had a six, we'd expect him to check that back also most of the time. Most of the to get time. value with a six, Well, right? you get value from queen high, apparently. Turns out you can, but you wouldn't necessarily think that is Soma. All right, so so may. And so Soma, so may. So Soma might have a lower flush draw. We can beat that. Yeah. And we can't beat the pocket pairs, but it's kind of absurd for somebody to play a pocket pair this way. I mean, quad kings, it's it's mostly quad kings right. or nothing unless he somehow has pocket tens. Right? And on top of that, we add that somebody is the type of guy who opens 8-3 suited under the gun. We have to add a ton of random bluff combos. Queen high is good enough. How can you ever fold? Gotta call. That's what I was saying. <laughs> so in the end, the call kind of makes sense. They both played the hand crazy spewy, yeah. not recommended, but it's a cool hand, obviously. It's really cool. And it's possible that these decisions are either going to really work or really not work against most other players. Like what Somme does may really work against most of the other players at the table. What Neto does may really fail against most yeah. of the other players at the table, but Neto picked his customer really well or Somme did a bad job picking his. All right, so we decided that there was probably a lot of uh, measuring going on in this uh, particular hand. Yeah. 
But that may not necessarily be true. Do you have other theories about why the guys play these hands this particular way? Because that's how you play A3 suited. I mean, obviously, when you're playing GTO, <laughs> that's what you do. Doug Polk, where are you? <laughs> uh, so what do you think about the, the flop play especially? To me, that's actually the most interesting yeah. thing in this whole hand. So let us know if you like the lead, the raise, and the call, or why you think it's bad or good for any of those plays to have happened in the comments. We're going to respond to our favorite ones right up here. As we always do, there's nothing to click on. It's coming soon. Now, that was a pretty random hand with random bluffing going on. Yeah. If you want to see a little bit more of that, actually, with a suited eight, which is apparently the hand you choose for random bluffs. I mean, yeah. Check out, could you call down this bully in the main event by clicking up here? Yeah, that's a cool hand yeah. and a tough spot. The, uh, the guy who had the value or the better hand had a much stronger hand than queen high in that one. Yes, he did. But in some ways, a tougher decision, I would say, too. And bigger spot. Bigger spot, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, also, check out our podcast. We talked for, I don't know, 40 minutes, something like something, that. I don't know. Who cares? About this hand, <laughs> trying to get into everyone's head and figure out why are they doing what they're doing? Does any of this make sense? Is, is this good or just bad, et cetera, et cetera? It's called The Breakdown, presented by the Poker Guys. It's on any podcast app, et cetera, et cetera. And if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel.